أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My topic for today is Israf Israf in simple language is extravagance In Islam extravagance refers to excessive and harmful spending of money or unnecessary or harmful items. Islam teaches, that, teaches us that wealth is a form of trust to everyone, okay? So, from God. So, it is important for all of us to use wealth very wisely in, in accordance to the principles of Islam. Muslims are, are, Muslims are encouraged to spend their wealth in ways that benefit themselves, their families, and our society as a whole. There are, there are three individual factors that determine if an action falls into the boundaries of waste or not. Firstly, we have the religiously impermissible actions, which means that spending on haram activities such as gambling, bribing, and taking the right of other people or even oppressing Muslims, because according to Sharia and Islamic laws, this is considered as asraf. The second one is the judgment of intellect. When it, the judgment of intellect means spending money and spending your wealth on intellect, buying things that you, want, you know that you won't even use. A perfect example, buying books that you know you won't even read. It will, just stay your, it will just stay on your shelf without you reading them. That's an example of a straff of resources. Then we have societal norms. Societal norms. This means being wasteful regarding social norms typically refers to actions or behaviors that are seen as excessive or indulgent when compared to what is considered socially acceptable or responsible in a particular culture or society. Moving on, there are many negative effects of Israf in the society. Firstly, we have destruction of social wealth and resources. Let's take an example in a society where there is a lot of Israf of water going on there. There will come a time, there will come a point where there is no enough water, there is no enough water for everyone in the society. The poor people won't have enough income to buy enough water for themselves since the, the, uh, the sellers who sell water will rise their prices since it's very difficult for them to access water. This will lead to the poor people actually, actually doing corruption such as robbery to obtain the money to buy the human need because, uh, because water is very essential for life and everyone needs it. The second one we have landfill, land, over, landfill overloads. A perfect example would be plastic. We tend to use plastic so, so, so much in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, it is better if we recycle, if, if we recycle plastic because if we don't, in the, in the end of the day, we end up burning plastics and it causes a harmful emission into the environment such as carbon dioxide gases which can lead to global warming and other respiratory diseases. Then we have social inequality and the creation of, life's cla la of class life struggle. I would like to give an example. Some people, they have a trend going on. They say that if you wear clothes twice or thrice, it's considered old now. Just throw it away. Just keep it in the trash can. However, so your trash can be someone else's treasure. When you are throwing something that you have just bought, you have just, you have just, worn, it, you have just worn it in one, you have just worn it once, twice, or thrice. You just don't have to throw it because this is a form of israf. People are finding, uh, people are finding clothes, and if you don't want to use it, you could give it to someone in need for it. So, how can we how can we avoid israf in our lives? Firstly, it is let us recycle reuse and repair our resources. Whenever we have something broken, just don't throw it in, into the trash can. Instead, be creative and learn how to repair your things or even reuse it. Like I had said, plastics. You could reuse plastics and make other different things. You could recycle, maybe, maybe plastic. You could recycle and be creative on how to make other new things. I think the best way on how to avoid this rough is by giving charity to the orphans 
and the needy. Whenever we do this, it gives us a sense, it, it gives us a sense of contentment and gratefulness. And we begin we, and we begin to thank our Almighty for providing us with these resources which other people do not have. And whenever, and whenever we give our, give our charity, we feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with these resources that other people do not have. Then I have scenarios from my life where I did israf. Firstly, is keeping the air conditioner on when I'm going to sleep, even though I do not need that much of the coolness in my room. So I try to keep the I try to keep um, a timer that goes on off automatically after a couple of hours. Then I have wasting my time. Wasting my time. Whenever I come back from school, I just go and sleep. I do not I do not do anything productive. When I wake up, I do the same thing. I think it's very important for all of us to manage our time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears in the Quran by time. Wal asr, I swear by time. Inna al insana lafi khusr. Indeed, man is in loss. This shows that it's very important for us to prioritize our time. And I think it's very, I think it's very important for us to also avoid this rough of time. And the most important thing for us to avoid Israf is to be content with whatever you have, to be grateful whatever you have. Because Imam Ali has stated, contentment is the capital that never comes to an end. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.